Hi, this is Joe Hildreth, and in this screencast, I want to show you how to install Linux CNC uh, from an ISO. If you've been following along with my KRM01 uh, CNC build, you'll know that uh, we have just pretty much finished up the electronics and are ready to start with Linux CNC. So I figured the first place to start with that would be uh, where to get it and uh, how to how to burn the ISO and how to install it uh, to your computer. To download um, Linux CNC, uh, simply go to linuxcnc.org and click on the download link and it will take you to this page. And we basically have two options. We can either install the uh, Linux 2.6 uh, from the uh, Debian Wheezy uh, Linux CNC image or we can use the older ISO which runs Ubuntu 10.4 and uh, Linux 2. or Linux CNC 2.5 which would then have to be uh, updated to Linux uh, CNC 2.6. Uh, your choice is really up to you. Uh, one thing that I probably should point out um, is that Ubuntu 10.4 uh, is no longer supported by the Ubuntu uh, canonical community uh, and therefore you, know, you won't get any security updates and that sort of thing. So probably um, if I were starting fresh um, and from the beginning I think I would just download the ISO from um, the Debian Wheezy image and by clicking this link right here. When you click this link um, it will save the binary.hybrid.iso to your disk. I've already done this for the sake of time, so um, just pause this video and when you get it, then you can continue from here. So, information about um, Linux CNC can be found on linuxcnc.org, and there's a lot of information on the wiki and, of course, the documentation. When you click on Linux CNC documentation, um, I'm sorry. You will uh, come to this page, and this will have all the manuals for the current version of Linux CNC. I strongly recommend, if you've never used Linux CNC, to download and read the Getting Started Guide and the User Manual. The other items here, the Integrators Manual and the How Manual, are for a little bit more advanced topics. Uh, eventually, though, you will probably want to read those. Uh, the uh, manuals, the forums, and the wikis uh, are your best friends. Uh, when it comes to learning Linux CNC. Uh, you can always email me, but I'm quite busy and, and don't know how long it will take. Uh, the forum is really quite um, the best place to go to learn uh, Linux CNC. So once you've downloaded the ISO, uh, you'll need to um, burn that to the disk, or burn it to a disk, and there are several ways to do, uh, to do that. If you're in Linux, you can use um, K3B or you can use Bracero. Uh, if you're in Windows, you can use Infra Recorder. Infra Recorder is a free uh, CD DVD burning tool. Uh, you can get it at infrarecorder.org. Uh, essentially, you will launch Infra Recorder, Recorder, put your media in there, and then you'll select Burn Image and you'll browse to the image and tell it to burn. And that's essentially the same practice that you'll use with. Um, uh, Ubuntu or Kubuntu or Red Hat or any of the other uh, um, uh, Unix versions that are out there. So um, you can find additional information on installing Linux CNC from the wiki, and here it talks about um, you know getting the pre-compiled versions and compiling it for yourself and all kinds of other stuff. That's really beyond the scope of this uh, tutorial, so we'll just leave that for your light reading pleasure. Now normally, uh, after the CD is burnt, you'll stick it into your uh, drive and uh, turn on the machine and let it boot up off of the CD. Well, in this case, it's a DVD because uh, if you're doing the Wheezy install, it's a kind of a large disk. It has some other software pre-installed. Uh, you'll have to burn it onto a DVD. Now, in order to show you that, what I've done was I've created, um, using uh, Oracle VirtualBox, I've created a... Uh, um, a virtual machine to install Linux CNC into it and have um, pre-configured everything here and mounted the drive so when I start this it's essentially just like starting uh, hitting the power on your computer once you've put the disk in so I'm going to do that now 
the amount of time that it takes to do this really depends on um, the soft, uh, the speed of your computer, you know, the processor, the amount of RAM, uh, the quality of your disk subsystems, and that sort of thing. Uh, to initially test it, I would suggest maybe coming over here and uh, selecting Live and uh, press enter here and this will boot off the CD and let you kind of play with the com uh, the, s the software uh, off of the CD without making any changes to your computer that way you pretty much know if it's going to work on your machine. I'm going to assume at this point that you've probably already done that so we're just going to go to install. Uh, we have two uh, possible installation modes um, well actually three but two that are probably of importance to us are graphical and text. Um, you can use either one, but in this uh, in this uh, example, I'm going to use the graphical. So I've highlighted that. And I'm going to press the Enter key. Now, while we're waiting for the computer to read the contents of the CD and start the install program, um, again, I want to remind you that uh, any information about Linux CNC. Um, that uh, you're after. The forums are probably the best place to get that uh, or uh, IRC uh, and that sort of stuff. So when the uh, installation uh, program starts, the first thing it asks you to select your language. Well, I'm an English-speaking person, so I'm, it's already highlighted. So I want to select that and I want to click Continue. Now it wants to know my location. I am located in the United States, so I'll select that and hit Continue. And then it wants to configure the uh, keyboard layout. Of course, if you speak different languages, you have uh, some different key set layouts. Uh, since I speak American English, this is the one that I'm going to select. So I'm going to hit Continue. Okay, at this time, uh, the installation software is going to detect some hardware and mount the uh, ROM and start uh, pulling in some information to actually get the install started. This might take a minute depending on your uh, speed of your computer, the speed of your CD uh, reader, and that sort of stuff. So just bear with me and we'll wait on that. I also want to point out that it's possible to create a bootable USB thumb drive. And uh, if you go to uh, the LinuxCNC.org page, you'll find a link on how to create that in Windows and uh, how to create that in Linux. Now, just it's worth pointing out um, that the USB creator in Ubuntu will not work with the with the uh, image that's uh, being provided. Uh, there's a bug in it or something that won't allow because this image is designed to work with both USB thumb drives and uh, uh, DVDs. So, just a word of caution there. Uh, but you can do it in Linux by using the DD command. So after it's in, after it's pulled up the initial uh, software uh, to do the installation, um, we'll go ahead and s set some sort of pre-configurations for the computer so that it can uh, make connections to the network and and uh, do things along that nature. So at this point, it wants to know the host name for the system. Now this is uh, the computer. If you're from a Windows environment, this is the computer name. And by default, it is uh, set to DB, and you can call this anything you want. I think I'm going to just call mine Linux CNC. And I'm going to hit continue. And then it wants the, dom the uh, domain part of your internet address. Now, uh, unless you have a registered internet domain, um, it, you probably should be careful about what you put in here. If you do have one, and, and you've been through that process, and you know how that works, you probably... Uh, uh, don't need this portion of the tutorial. Because this computer is not uh, part of a registered domain, I'm just going to use a local domain. I'm going to make sure it's something that would not um, translate or resolve to uh, uh, a domain that possibly somebody else out there has. So I'm going to call mine cnc.local. Okay, because the .local uh, top-level domain does not exist. I don't have to worry about it interfering with anybody. You can pretty much call this anything you want. So I'm going to hit continue. So at this point it starts uh, configuring the network and then it asks, up, it asks to set up uh, users and passwords. So we need to create an account and this is the full name of the user. Uh, you can put your name here, that's what I want to do. 
actually I'll put my name, not yours, but you get the idea. My name is Joe Hildreth. I'm going to hit continue. And now it wants a user for the account. I'm just going to append my last initial in there. So the username for this account is Joe H. Hit continue. Now it wants a, um, a password. Uh, I'm just going to use the letter C and C. This is something that's in my shop. It usually never has uh, real internet uh, connectivity to it. Uh, so that's that's what I want to use. Um, set that to whatever you like, uh, as difficult as you think that you need to set it or as simple as you want to set it. So I'm going to hit continue. And then at this point, it's uh, going to set up the uh, time server and it wants to know what time zone you're in. I am uh, I live in Tennessee and I uh, live in Middle Tennessee, so my time zone is central. I want to continue. And then it starts detecting the disks that you have attached to your computer. This could take a little bit. Um, it's going to bring up the partition manager and and the uh, crypto uh, stuff if you want to encrypt your partitions and that sort of thing. Um, this is only the uh, second or third time that I've uh, tried to install this um, before doing the uh, screencast so I'm sorry if this is a little bit of a bumpy ride but here's uh, here's what our choices are uh, there's guided that uses the entire disk if your computer disk has nothing on it this is probably the best way to do if you're you, you know if you have a server and you need to set up logical volume uh, uh, volumes or if you need encrypted file systems these or then you can actually select manual which would uh, allow you to create uh, the petitions you want and where you want them at. Um, since I don't have another operating system on this computer, well on this virtual machine in this case, um, the disk manager does not detect another uh, operating system to install beside. So I'm going to use the entire disk. So I'm going to select guided, use entire disk and hit continue. At this point it says okay this is the uh, disk that I detect and here you see it's a uh, 42 gig uh, VBox hard disk. I'm going to select that and hit continue. And then it gets to the point where it's going to partition the disk, uh, disk in the background. So it's, it's going to compute the partition sizes, does this for you. It lets you know that, hey, I want to create a primary partition of 41 gig. This is going to be extended 4. And then we're going to create a, uh, another partition that's a logical partition of 1.8 gig. It's going to be swap. And this is fine for for what we're going to do. Um, the program does a pretty good job of determining the partition sizes and where they need to be for you. So we're going to click finish partitioning and write changes to disk and hit continue. Um, because this makes changes that can destroy data, it says, hey, are you for sure, for sure? We're going to select yes and we're going to hit continue again. At this point, it will format the partitions. This could again could take a little while depending on the size of the disk um, and uh, the speed of your hardware, the processor, and the amount of memory. So at this point we're uh, we're being notified that we're copying the data to the disk or we're installing a system to the disk. Now this could take quite a while and I'm not going to sit here through this but essentially what's going to happen is it's going to go through this and it's going to install Grub and some other things and then finally it's going to tell you that hey you're going to need to uh, reboot uh, to start using your system. So I'm just going to pause the video here and then I'll come back when that part finishes. So I'll uh, just pause the video and when your system reaches this point um, uh, go ahead and come back. So I'll see you, uh, see you when this is done. So once the system is uh, completed installing you'll get this screen here that says that the installation is complete. So at this time you just uh, you hit continue. It's going to do some finalizing and finishing up and that will restart the computer. Uh, should eject the media uh, so that you can take it out and will boot up into your new Linux CNC system. So <clears throat> in the next video I will show you how to uh, go ahead and update Linux CNC because uh, the uh, ISO that we've downloaded actually has the uh, 2.6 dot o dot pre five I think if I remember right and the most current version at the time of this recording is two dot six dot three so I will see you um, on that side and uh, hopefully uh, this went smooth for you if you have questions uh,
please feel free to email me. You can go to myheap.com, uh, go to the contact portion at the top of the page, um, uh, right here, and you can email me, uh, or if you want to go to the Linux CNC site and click on form, uh, register for a um, an account on the forum and you can post questions there too. I'll, I'll try to kind of keep an eye out there but there's some wonderful wonderful folks here that uh, uh, enjoy helping and like to see people bring their uh, uh, creativity and creations to life. So uh, until the next time um, um, I hope things go well and then like I said in the next video we'll show you how to update uh, Linux CNC. So thank you and have a great day.